Hello everyone, welcome to another video in the series of Semantic Kernel and in this video I will show you how you can make a call to your custom function which is also known as native function. So native functions are those functions which are written by you and those are not related to AI. So let's go ahead and first understand how to do this. So the very first thing we need is we need to define the function. So for defining a function you can just create a file uh, under the plugins folder and in my case I have just given it a name custom math plugin and once it is done you need to import the library which is annotated now depending on which version you are using you can uh, import the required library so I have written both of these lines so that you can decide which one is working for you otherwise you can write all these four lines if you are not sure which one is your version number Okay, so once that is done, we need to define the kernel function. So whenever we are dealing with semantic kernel, we usually pass arguments in the form of uh, kernel arguments and we annotate that with the kernel function. So here, first of all, I have imported the kernel function, which is from the kernel function decorator and it is part of the semantic kernel. And after that, I have defined a class over here, custom math plugin. Now this could be anything in your case you can name it whatever you want it's not necessary to be ending with the plugin it's just the name i have written such that you can understand that okay this is one kind of plugin and inside the plugin you need to define the function the way you define in your python code so you it should start with dev you should have your function name then the parameters uh, which you need to pass in and then the return type here and just the return body of your function. The only thing which differentiates it from the normal way how we write function is that annotated word. So here everything has to be annotated whether it is your return type or whether it is your input variables. So you can see here I have written the annotated then the uh, uh, data type of the input variable and some small description if you want to add here. And same thing for the output, so output return type and some description about what kind of output it is. So once this is done, we are good with our function. Now the last thing which is very important is decorating this function with a kernel function and make sure that you are giving the proper name. So this is the function divide and add. Uh, this is the word which we will be using to make a call to this function. So it doesn't matter what name I have given over here. But for outside world, they know just this particular name, divide and add. So make sure that you are giving the proper name for all the functions which you want to make a call from or associated with the semantic kernel. So I have written this function, which you will see that what we are doing here is we are dividing those two numbers and then we are just adding the first number. It's just some custom logic I tried to make. In your case, it could be very complex or you may have inputs from here and there. But the overall idea here is to show you that you should have some key features here. First one is the kernel function. Then you should have a proper name. You should have an annotated keyword against your input as well as the output parameters. So once this is done, we are good to go ahead and call this function. So now first thing you need to do in your notebook is make sure that you have the semantic kernel installed and I think you need this uh, for this as well. So it's always good to go ahead and create your virtual environment and get it installed first. So and then we are good to go ahead with the creation of our semantic kernel. So I would just type in five to six lines and you will see that how easy it was to make a call to this. So I'm saying import semantic kernel as sk and then we will just initialize it or let's say instantiate it and i would say so now we have our kernel object ready next thing is let me quickly execute this cell okay next thing is i need to pull in the plugin which i have created outside so for that it's just a normal how we used to make a call to our classes so i'm saying plugins dot custom math plugin and i'm saying import custom math plugin then i will just create a variable you can give any name to a variable and kernel dot import plugin from object so inside this first of all you need to provide so these are the parameters you need to provide the so first one is the instance now your it could be a class or it could be a dictionary it could be anything in our case i just created a class then these are the parameters. So the first one is the plugin instance and the second parameter is the plugin name. So let me quickly define. So this is the 
thing whose instance would be created and then I'm just providing its name. So name is the same for me. So I'm providing this. <clears throat> Let's run this cell as well. And now I'm going to make a call to this. So it's an async call. So we have to use await. And then I'm saying kernel.invoke. And here we need to pass all these parameters. So let me quickly show you what all we need. The first parameter here is the name of the function. Now we have all the functions imported in this variable t. So everywhere we will be referencing just t rather than calling the actual name, rather than calling it with actual name as custom math plugin. So here I will just say the name of my function, divide and add. The second parameter is the arguments. So if you remember correctly, we have two arguments. So I would say first is this and second one is, let's say five or four or five, whatever. Okay, and then I would simply say result dot value. So these are the only few lines of code we need to write. So you can see that when we are dividing 15 by three, uh, 15 by five, it would give you three. Then again, we are adding it to the first number, which is three plus 15 is 18. And that's what we are getting in the form of float value. So these are just, you can see four or five lines of code. We need to invoke a native function, which we have already written somewhere. So that's all I have for today. And before winding up, I would quickly like to point you to the entire playlist. So if you are new to this channel, then this is my playlist in which I have already created six videos earlier. It's like how you can get started, how to read your prompt from a text file, how to read it from a YAML file, and how can you uh, maintain in-memory history for your ongoing conversation with the chatbot. So just go with this and I think you will get a pretty much idea on how to get started. So that's all I have for today and I hope you wa enjoyed watching this. Thanks for watching.